All right, miners, here's the deal. We have 3.6 billion square kilometers of Minecraft world to conquer, industrialize, and develop, and I'm sure as hell not doing it all by hand. So we're gonna have to automate, build advanced control systems, and push the limits of computer science in Feed the Beast Minecraft. Welcome to Datacraft. Hello, my friends. It's about time for us to get serious. Operation Branch Mine has been an unparalleled, or should I say, highly parallelized, success. Even if a couple of waterlogged caves provided greater difficulty than I was expecting. But we now have significant mineral and material wealth, a second turtle, and some basic enchanting infrastructure. I even spotted a watchtower on the neighbouring island, which led me to our very first adventuring loot. In short, we've left the early game behind. Our new mid-game focus is now on teching up in accordance with the fourfold stratagem. Number one, to automate collection of resources and build farms and mob farms. Number two, to advance our technology by constructing more advanced machines and tools. Number three, to lay down infrastructure for storage, processing, transportation, and power. And number four, to develop our software, centralized control, live mapping, logging, and other advanced abstractions. Today, our focus is towards unlimited, unlimited power. power. Which for us means mechanisms charcoal blocks formed from nine charcoal. These have super high energy density, perfect for turtles, and they're also renewable. So we need a huge tree farm and it's going to be underground and we're going to automate the whole thing. To get started on that, we need to begin by processing our mined ores. We can double the yield of most ores, including iron and gold, by grinding each ore down into two dust using thermal pulverizer, and then smelting each dust into an ingot using a powered furnace. We can use the same coal generator from the last chapter for the time being, and then we'll use Mechanism's logistical transporter pipes to move items around, and universal cables to wire up power to each of our machines. Finally, we'll add an energy cube to act as a power bank, and hey presto, grinder on the left, furnace in the middle, and the old metallurgic infuser on the right. Inputs in the top chests, and outputs from the bottom. We also got a sword enchanted with Ender Disruption, which prevents Endermen from teleporting away. This is important because Ender Pearls are useful for all kinds of things in these mods, Chief among them, chunk loaders. In theory, one of these things will cover our entire island and keep the chunks loaded even when we're offline. This is especially good for turtles because their software crashes when their chunk unloads and they can't resume back up again. Our living space is also due some small amount of organization, so let's give that a try. And done. Our mineshaft now has a ceiling. It's no x Light 9000, but it'll get the job done. Items have been categorized over on the left here, and machines have been moved over on the right. All the old ones you've come to expect, as well as a new induction smelter. In addition, Ada Island is absolutely plastered with torches now. Now also, after some experimentation, the Chicken Chunks Chunk Loader doesn't actually appear to do anything uh, with the current server setup that I have here. Total waste of an ender pearl, unfortunately. I did manage to acquire a chunk loader, or I did manage to acquire another ender pearl, so now we're using these basic chunk loaders instead from the chunk loaders mod, and they do appear to actually work. When I log out, the trees do grow and the turtles don't crash which is fantastic. Unfortunately, they only load three by three chunks. At this level, uh, you can upgrade them, I think using blaze rods, but we're still a ways off from that. Still, something that actually works is preferable to something that doesn't. Okay, 
Time to focus on the tree farm now. We could use more turtles for this, but I believe it's a good idea to log some different approaches. Branch out, as it were. So I think we're going to use the create mod for this one. But the create mod is going to require some processing steps that are a little bit more manual than we may be used to. First off, we're going to need some andesite. Andesite, you say? But it's one of the most common types of stone in the world. Well, not round these parts, sir. You see, we have the quark mod installed, which means different alternate stone types in different biomes. Our home is a plains biome, which means we get marble here. To find andesite, we need a forest biome, or dark forest, or birch forest, any forest, really. And that'll require a bit of an expedition. After some searching far and wide across the seas, I found a small vein in a cave, and then a much larger vein on the side of a mountain. In the process, I found some weird chunk borders, which seems to indicate a world's gen discontinuity, probably when I updated the mod. Still, that means at least we get some interesting terrain features to build around, so I'm down with it. I did a bit more exploring to try and find a swamp, because we're going to need some slime balls, but I came up short there and returned home. However, it looks like we can get slime balls from magma cream, which we can get from magma blocks. So that is probably the way forward. Finally, we can put our andesite to use. We can craft it with zinc nuggets to make andesite alloy, but we can actually also throw it in an induction smelter with the zinc to double the yield. Then we can crank out some basic create mod materials like andesite casings, cog wheels, a mechanical press, and, well, uh, a crank. We can make rotational energy by clicking and use the press to flatten some iron. Flattened iron makes an encased fan, which generates energy from heat, and then we can get some magma blocks from a deep sea vent. Add a gearbox to change the direction of rotation, plus a redstone signal, and hey presto, a powered press. And now we can make our final basic material, which is brass sheets. which make brass casings, which makes adjustable crates, which is basically going to be the storage for our create tree cutting and planting machine. Finally, for today, we need to dig out some space for this thing. So let's get Betabot to do the work for us. There's a platform here, halfway down the mineshaft, and the corridor to where the tree farm is going to be. As you can see, this wall represents a chunk border, and this corridor is in the exact midpoint of the chunk. We're going to dig out an 18 by 18 area, which will be an entire chunk, plus one block in each direction for walls. This room needs to be tall enough for trees to grow, then have a floor, and then have machinery beneath the floor, so there's no need to be conservative here. We can use our good old mineshaft program for this. And that should be just about everything ready everything we need to build a tree farm, plus a little bit of civilization along the way. Oh, what's that? What's that flattened area to the left with those holes, you ask? Well, that's an N plus two episode thing. Mind your own business. Seriously. <laughs>